So colugos represent a really interesting but rather poorly studied group of mammals that make up their own order, Dermoptera. And under the current taxonomy, there's two genera and two species classified. The Philippine colugo, Sinocephalus bolens, indicated by the distribution of red, and the Sunda colugo, Galeopteris variegatus, indicated by the distribution of green. These mammals are widely distributed throughout the Southeast Asian mainland and archipelago, and they're strictly arboreal and limited to evergreen forests. Uh, their, main, their, their primary mode of transportation is by gliding, and they, they're very proficient at this and are capable of gliding up to 150 meters. Um, they have poor dispersal capabilities outside of forested areas and require forested corridors for dispersal, and so therefore we think that Klugos would be a good indicator of the past forest distributions and dispersal corridors um, and other biogeographic hypotheses. And currently, Kalugos are classified as of least, each species is classified as of least concern by IUCN. However, there have been studies published supporting not two species, but multiple species of Kalugos that could be classified within the Galeopteris species alone. Across major geographical regions like Peninsulasia, Borneo, and Java. And so today we want to address four main questions, and we want to know the correct placement of Klugos, or the order Dermoptera, within the mammalian tree of life. And we need to address this because there's been conflicting hypotheses in the past. Uh, we need to establish a molecular estimate for the divergence time between the two Klugo genera, so we can use this as a calibrative marker, since there are no appropriate fossil calibrations for Klugos. Um, and then we also, um, Based on the preliminary data uh, from other studies, we want to take a closer look at the evolutionary history and biogeography within each Klugo genera or genus. And we want to do this by getting a broader sampling distribution, um, or sampling across their distribution, and then query markers that represent maternal, paternal, and biparental inheritance. Uh, and then we also want to identify biogeographic patterns, not only in Klugos, but we, are, we want to compare those patterns patterns that we see in uh, data, mitochondrial data that we've generated for mouse, deer, and penguins that represent taxa with different dispersal capabilities. So for the first, object, the first two objectives, we now have access to genome-wide data since, the, uh, since two genomes of Klugos, one for a high coverage from Galeopteris and low coverage from Sinocephalus have been assembled, and we can apply these genomes uh, to address our first two questions. So where do Kalugos go within the mammalian tree of life? Uh, it's been uh, proposed somewhat recently uh, based on a limited number of markers that Kalugos are assisted of primates, and this is based on phylogenetically informative indels. Uh, and then another reason why we need to address the divergence time uh, between the two genera of Kalugos, Galeopteris and Sinocephalus, is that the point estimates for published studies have not uh, corroborated one another. So for uh, where do Klugos go, uh, we, our data is supporting uh, the hypothesis of primatomorpho, where Klugos are sister to primates. And we did this by generating a, a genome-wide one-to-one orthologous gene set, uh, and then added in orthologous genes from Klugos and tree shrews, and our phylogeny is supported with uh, high bootstrap support. And then now that we have our topology, we can enforce this topology and generate the time tree to calculate the uh, divergence time between the, Klugo, the two Kalugo genera, Galeopteris and Sinocephalus, using seven external mammalian fossil calibrations. Uh, and we did this again by generating a one-to-one -one orthologous uh, gene set. Uh, and we did this using uh, the most recent ver version of Hamel. And we got a point estimate of 10.7 million years. Uh, we also included an uncalibrated node of human and chimp to, as a sort of control to see how our dating was working on our more terminal nodes in our, in our uh, time tree. And then also using the upper and lower bounds of our confidence interval, we'll use these bounds to constrain our Klugo-specific evolutionary questions or biologies later to come. So looking at Klugo-specific evolutionary history, We've got a broader sampling across their distribution, and we did this uh, by turning to museums where we could sample a broad distribution in a short amount of time. Uh, and primarily, we focused on collecting uh, about five milligrams of tissue inside of the nasal and cranial cavity, and we're calling them brain and nasal crusties. Um, 
And so uh, after collecting the samples, we extract the DNA and create alumina libraries. And then to acquire our mitochondrial and nuclear data, we did two different procedures. For the nuclear, for the nuclear data, uh, we designed uh, probes, uh, bitenylated probes, uh, based on the published Galeopteris genome, amplified them in modern specimens, and then hybridized our probes uh, doing a capture hybridization experiment um, with our museum alumina libraries before sequencing and assembling. And with the mitochondrial data, uh, we were able to just do um, raw genome sequencing and uh, were able to um, basically precipitate out the mitochondrial genome from the genomic background by reference or de novo assembly, uh, since mitochondrial DNA is in relative higher abundance. So looking at, uh, so using our assembled Kalugo mitochondrial genomes, uh, you, we, uh, we constructed an ML tree and then enforced that topology to create a time tree in Hamel again. And what you can see is that our mitochondrial phylogeny has a, has a lot of structure throughout the tree within both species of Kalugo, the Sunda Kalugo and the Philippine Kalugo. And to corroborate our findings, um, not the Sulawesi tarsier, but the Philippine tarsiers are, uh, uh, they have similar monophyletic groups of tarsiers that correspond with monophyletic groups that we see within Klugos across Mindanao, Bobo, uh, Dinagat, and Lente and Samar. So, uh, and now each individuals grouped together by similar geographical regions, indicating that uh, there was not a lot of recent dispersal over large distances within Klugos. Um, and I'd also like to point out that we have an interesting situation where we see division of East from West Borneo where West Borneo is grouping with Sumatra, Peninsula, Malaysia, and Indo-Chinese Indo glucose. However, East Borneo is grouping with Java for our mitochondrial phylogeny. Now this obviously only represents the maternal line of inheritance, and so we wanted to compare this against nuclear loci of biparental and Y-chromosome data. And so again, with the mitochondrial DNA, we see West Borneo being uh, placed within uh, or with uh, Sumatra, Peninsula, Malaysia, and Indochina while East Borneo and Java are separate. However, in our nuclear phylogenies, Java is now moving uh, down within the topology and it's grouping with West Borneo, Peninsula, Malaysia, and Indochina. However, East Borneo is still supported to be monophyletically distinct. Um, and it should be noted that this backbone here is not supported. It is basically a polytomy, so it's, we think that that would be a rapid uh, speciation. So, um, sorry, one more thing. Uh, and so a possible explanation for the topological differences and the reduction in our divergence times of our basal node of Galeopteris from 8 to 4.5 is that you might have uh, male bias dispersal from West Java, Sumatra, Peninsula, Malaysia, or Indochina. If you have males migrating from here to Java, that would re replace this East, uh, this East Bornean-like nuclear genome with more of a mainland nuclear genome, however, retain this East Bornean-like mitochondrial sequence. Uh, so biogeography, Southeast, the Southeast Asian archipelago is a really interesting place to look at these questions uh, because of the rising and falling of sea levels over time. Um, this basically opens and closes corridors for disper dispersal. This has happened frequently within the last million years. However, uh, this has also happened you know, five to 10 million years in the past, connecting major land masses. So when we compare Kalugo evolutionary history uh, to mouse deer and pangolins, uh, data that we generated for mouse deer and pangolins, uh, we're, compa we, we're comparing the biparental data from Kalugos to the mitochondria or maternal line of inheritance for mouse deer and pangolins because we think the biparental data would be more representative of the species tree for Kalugos. So again, we see uh, a division between West and East Borneo and uh, Indochina, Peninsula Malaysia, Sumatra, West Borneo, and Java grouping together, and East Borneo is monophyletically distinct. And we see evidence uh, within, while well, querying three species of mouse deer, that we get similar trends where West Borneo is closely related to Peninsula Malaysia, and then Tribulus japanicus is diverged uh, from Tribulus nevu. Um, and then also looking at Trigulus conchal, you know, which is classified as one species. We see East Borneo is distinct from this monophyletic clade of Indochina, 
Peninsula Malaysia and West Borneo. And this is also supported with our pangolin data, although our sampling is much lower. Um, and also, there's a really interesting situation. We, all, we see the division between East and West Borneo, but also we're seeing consistent uh, placement where West Borneo and Peninsula Malaysia are somewhat closely related. And when we look at the divergence times in our phylogeny, the, interestingly, the, the more terrestrial species of mouse deer and pangolin have really low Pleistocene divergence times. Uh, indicating that they would have exchanged genetic data more recently. However, with the Kalugo biparental data, we are still at uh, 3.6 million years, indicating a Pliocene uh, event for their last exchange of genetic material. Uh, and we think that this could possibly be evidence for a savanna corridor, but maybe not a forested corridor, connecting Peninsula Malaysia and Sumatra and West Borneo, where Kalugos would be more reliant on a forested habitat. For dispersal. And then other possible biogeographic explanations for the, the major splits that we see in our phylogeny. Uh, we see that our point estimate of 10.7 million years that we estimated with whole genome orthologous data um, for the split between the two Kalugo genera of the Galeopteris and Sinocephalus genera is falling right at 10.7 at a low C standing. And then, of course, our confidence intervals are large because we only have one calibration on the base of our our trees, but uh, so there are also multiple low sea level standings that could have uh, explained the divergent states within the basal split of Sinocephalus and Galeopteris. And so to conclude, Kalugos are sister primates based on whole genome ortho, uh, one to one ortholog data. Kalugos has diverged around 10 to 11 million years ago. And we see uh, genetic evidence for, based on maternal, paternal, and biparental data supporting multiple species of colugos that could be defined within each currently defined species. Uh, and then we also see an interesting and consistent uh, phylogenetic relationship where East and West Borneo are separated. However, I would note that this is not always the case um, with mammalian taxa. So, and with that, I'd like to thank everyone uh, in uh, Dr. Bill Murphy's lab at Texas A&M who helped with DNA extractions, um, and also all these museums who have been such a big part of this project with Nancy Simmons at the American Museum, uh, Mr. Lim and Kelton um, at the Raffles Museum in Singapore, uh, Chris Helgen at the Smithsonian Institution, Larry Heaney who provided modern uh, sinocephalus tissue for our capture experiments, and then also uh, West Warren and Patrick Minx, who assembled the Galeopteris genome. So, thank you. We have one minute for questions. Thank you.